Okay, we're going to start this right now because anyone that has seen Paul before knows that uh, he has a tendency to go on, which is to great benefit to everybody here. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce the next speaker. Uh, Paul Cech is somebody that I've known for the last six years, and he has had a profound impact on my personal and professional life. The things that he's going to talk about today, uh, for some of you, uh, they might be a little extreme. They might seem uh, a little out there, but I'll tell you what, uh, anyone that's interested in, in achieving high performance, whether it's with athletes or regular clientele, from someone who works with and has worked with hundreds and hundreds of professional athletes, as soon as you figure this stuff out, then you're going to be on the right road. And a lot of these topics are not as exciting, as sexy as, uh, as some of the other things you might hear over the weekend, but it's the dirt facts, it's the truth. Uh, listen up, pay very close attention, and uh, without any further ado, it's my honor to introduce Paul Cech. Thank you. It's uh, fantastic to be here. It was very, an honor to be uh, offered to come to the best of the best. That's quite a statement in itself. So anytime you can make it to the best list, that's cool. All right. Since I got kicked out of school, I had to do well somewhere else. So as you can see with the title, it's Nutrition, the Dirt Facts, getting right down to the absolute basics. What do we have to do to make everything else work? That's what I want to talk about today. So our learning objectives in this 90 minutes that will go by very fast, and you will probably think that I'm speaking at about 750 words a minute, but I doubt I can outperform Robert Rakowski. I will try. We want to look at what is called the wheel of life and recognize the vital relationship between soil health and nutrition. So soil, in other words, the nutrition in the soil and the health of plants, animals, and man. We want to learn to feed people correctly and, un uh, and avoid unnecessary industry-driven hype or the application of this for that nutritional supplemental approaches. I'm not saying that I don't think there's a place for that. But I'm saying what you'll see if you look around is that the nutritional industry is now pretty much owned by the drug industry. And the whole nutritional concept is now just, you know, by prescription. You know, if your butt itches, I got a pill for you. If your hair's falling out, I got a pill for you. It's, it's not really looking at causes. It's just this for that, which is exactly how the uh, drug system works, how allopathic medicine works. We want to see natural eating and organic food or nutrition as an essential element in high performance programming and it may actually be essential for the survival of man as a race as I will show you. I know that's a pr pretty heavy duty statement but I, I have facts and th things to back it up so uh, hang around. So the typical client that I see, a Czech client which is Corrective Holistic Exercise Kinesiology, that's my last name but that's the acronym I use for my institute. Among many other things, I use a very comprehensive uh, questionnaire that takes people usually three to four hours to fill out, and it's weighted, and it indicates to me which of their organ systems and hormonal systems and even psychological components are under stress. There's 29 systems that I look at here, and based on that and many other forms of analysis, whether it be blood tests, hormonal tests, salivary tests, cortisol rhythm tests, whatever I feel is necessary, I have to make decisions about how I'm going to address my client. I do not ever design exercise programs without a complete analysis of the emotional, mental, spiritual, and nutritional components. My first visit usually takes 10 to 16 hours with a client. Uh, that's spread typically over a few days. Uh, this is the only way I'll see people because after 22 years of hard work, I can tell you for me, in, in my opinion, that's the only way I can get the results that I want. And part of it has to do with the fact that the people that come to see me have pretty serious problems and they've tried most conventional approaches. Here's a typical client that I see. This girl was a power lifter. She had been training very hard and gaining weight, which is I've seen many, many cases like this, going to the gym regularly. And the bigger she got, the harder she worked, and the harder she worked, the bigger she got. She was so frustrated, she'd seen many doctors, many therapists, and got no better. And I offered to help her, uh, and she was elated at that. I literally wrote her program for her on a piece of paper. She's a massage therapist that I see in New Zealand, so when, when I finish lifting weights a couple times a week, she takes care of me. 
And I rarely ever do this for people because in my experience, whenever you give people something for free, they don't have any investment in it. But I could sense this woman had a deep soul need for help. She really truly wanted to get help, had made many efforts, didn't get it. So I thought, I'm going to help her this time and we'll see what happens. So I wrote her entire program for her on one piece of paper and said, if you do exactly that, it will change your life. And at the end of the lecture, I will show you what she looked like one year later. This is a, a summarized and tightened up questionnaire that's in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. And that system is also weighted and it allows you to identify how much stress any of your clients is under or you're under prior to designing any kind of an exercise program. And I also give you energy balancing exercises in the book so that you can use exercises to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and the right neurovascular and hormonal systems to balance the body out. So you uh, can see that and it works very effectively. And when people call me for an appointment, I ask them, have you used my book, How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy for a minimum of four to six months? And if they say no, I say, listen, you shouldn't come see me because all you're going to do is pay me $500 an hour and I'm just going to read my book to you. So if that's what you, if you like stories, I'll tell you a few, okay? Because I like money. <laughs> I have lots of uses for it. So here we are today and a, a very brief summary of our, our stats. Now I could have given you hours of statistics, so I just brought, brought what I thought would be a, a kind of a a drill at home point to begin this whole thing. In 1900, the risk of cancer was one person in 30. In 1980, it was one in five. By 1990, it was one in four. By 1995, it was one in three. By the year 2000, the risk of cancer is one in every two people and it's getting worse. That means if you look around the room right now, half of you will die of cancer according to solid statistics. If that doesn't concern you, I guess nothing will. Now, as you know, being fit and having muscle or being low on body fat is not really a reliable indicator of how long you're going to live. And fitness and health are not synonymous. And I've got walls covered with pictures of famous athletes to prove it and all their assessments and hormonal evaluations to prove it as well. It's amazing to me that we have the most complex medical system in the world. We have more doctors, therapists, nutritionists, dietitians, more medical and exercise people per capita than not only any country in the world, but than at any time in history. And today, it might interest you to know that we are spending approximately $14 million a minute on healthcare in the United States alone. Now, Canada's one of the uh, uh, better countries, but it's still not too far behind us. England and Australia are, are uh, fast chasing our tail. England outdoes us in some categories. Interestingly enough, we spend $14, $14 million a minute on healthcare, and our health rankings range between 11th and 37th in almost every statistical category. So we're not doing very well. I don't know if any of you saw this New York Times report uh, that, that recently there was an outbreak of heart disease epidemic linked to red meat consumption in African lions. Did any of you see that one? And they've also found escalating rates of breast cancer as an epidemic amongst female chimpanzees. Here you can see GlaxoSmithKline is uh, now the largest drug company in the world is now thinking of uh, figuring out how to get statin drugs into the lions. And over here, Gerber has offered to alleviate the burden on chimp mothers by offering a new freedom formula designed to allow mothers more uh, time to please their men. <laughs> Did any of you see that report? <laughs> yeah? Have you ever thought of why you've never seen a report like that on TV? Because they don't exist. That's a BS report. I made that up. To make a point, you've never seen anything like that on television. You've never read it on the paper. You've never heard it on the news. And as long as man stays the hell out of nature with his damn uh, supplements and uh, muscle and fitness crap, the animals have a fighting chance. But everywhere we go with our so-called rocket science, we create disease. 